in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed yes. We bless the name of the Lord for the privilege. We are to start a series tonight, um, but I may suspend it for next week. It's supposed to be a very powerful series. I know how prepared we have been, but the Lord just put something in my heart. Um, in fact, I was about to send some materials for printing that I'll be using tonight. Um, and the Lord just put something very important in my heart that I think would be a preamble to this series. And I trust that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Pick up your Bibles. And let's look at the word of God. I love the word of God. Because... It is the only instrument that can help me understand the ways of God. The Bible is a very interesting book. Unlike novels or many other books that have been written by religious founders and people who have documented their convictions, the Bible is able to convey to any man the realities of the spirit, the very mind of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's good to see everyone. I'll read just two verses. And then we'll teach. Verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 16. If you're there, say Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man and he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him, on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable Anything the Bible tells you is profitable, I think you should pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable. And so we spend time, we spend resources. Um, for instance, being gainfully employed is profitable. So we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed. We are happy. Right? We consider marriage to be profitable. Having children is profitable. So when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child, we all celebrate. There are things in our lives that are profitable. And here Paul is telling his son in the gospel, he's saying, look, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. He said, and is profitable. Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. 
to the end that whoever commits himself to them he says that the man of god may be what the word perfect there is the word mature that the man of god may be mature thoroughly furnished i like that not just furnished he said thoroughly furnished unto how many all good works please listen to me we all want to see results in our lives we all want to be mightily used by god in different areas it's been the cry of people that's why many of us are gathered here trusting that we'll learn of the ways of god and here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of god mature then is able to make him thoroughly furnished he uses a language that is used in, in in furniture work when you know how furniture is the finishing you put on it you you file it you polish it and it looks beautiful it says thoroughly furnished so you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal so minimal anyone can trust you your voice can be taken as the voice of god that's what it means to be thoroughly furnished such that when you communicate truths to people they don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing they have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction and so their hearts are open to receive then he says that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works unto the healing ministry unto delivering people unto saving people right acts 10 38 says how um, god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing what good see that so when the bible talks of good works anything that is able to reproduce the victory the life the power the love the might of god is considered to be good works good works are not ambitions when the bible talks about good works it's not talking about your ambition everything that you commit yourself to under christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them, that is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down and I don't even know what because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination. We mean that they have been able to educate their minds. They have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension and they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance are we together now and so we call them the enlightened ones even in the world they have groups and cults that they call illuminati and and those people pastor is that you god bless you i like us to bless him great man of god all the way from kaduna thank you please can you stand up let's honor you Thank you so much. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're to have a great meeting in his church and um, we couldn't make it, but um, we're coming. We're coming loaded and we'll bless the whole church. God bless you, sir. 
Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance. What is ignorance? Absence of light. Absence of strategy. Absence of illumination. Absence of understanding. Say amen. There is so much ignorance in the body we have to contend with God's light. To drive away this darkness. Otherwise the days that are coming will, um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. The disciples kept walking with Jesus. They thought they were understanding what he was teaching. And one time he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration and they were happy to shine and they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition. Have you read that in scripture? And they were so, listen, let me tell you something. That you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened. I'm going to tell you what illumination is. Those guys had been with Jesus. They heard him every time. And now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves, trying everything they knew to do. And here comes Jesus from the mountain. And then they brought the man. They said, your disciples could not heal him. And, and they just stood dumbfounded, hoping Jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special. And Jesus proved them wrong. Isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special? It's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area. It cancels out every excuse you would have given. Hallelujah. That's why they hated Jesus. They hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been given all kinds of excuses. Madam, look this and that and that and she believed it but here comes Jesus and then he lays hands on her and even tells her madam I'm surprised you are sick didn't they teach you all the people who have been teaching every time didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him ah, the woman said I, I, nobody told me and the, the scribes were standing there hoping Jesus would fail and to their shame, he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight and they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Please hear me. And take what I'm saying seriously. Your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light. Your illumination. Your depth of spiritual enlightenment. The quality of your ministry. The quality of your life. It says, my son, 
pay attention to my words he says incline them to your ears do not let them depart from you he said they are life to those who find them not those who hear about it they are life to those who found them and health to their flesh he says in isaiah 60 verse 1 what's the first word arise arise can we get amplified is it possible I like the way Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. It says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available. But until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth. And their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt. Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we... we uh, of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me, there's a cause, there's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside. And I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around. Victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. 
they never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself. That I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, for behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now, this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles is a force it can't be stopped gentiles shall come to your light and this is the part that is even greater it says they are kings see their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people the kings believe they have light too they too have some level of result so your initial light will not impress them it will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable. But they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry. But it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, Forget the fact that we insult you. We know. We know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. It was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly. Any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again. 
it didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous let me tell you what deceives us sometimes you are, i've taught you about prophetic atmospheres you can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with god and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it and so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen you will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But it's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says, Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it, and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. 
your assignment is not to run around chasing people looking for favor no the reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light the bible says gentiles shall come to your light they are kings to the brightness of your rising if you want to come out of the situations that surround your life the first key is light the first key is illumination there is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life are we, are we together please listen are we together there is something you don't know right now there is something you can know that will change your life forever i sit down and i look at what the lord has shown me now and i look at what i used to know four five six year, years ago and i cannot imagine that i was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life i can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination i would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things i didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do i have light or do i just have the letter do i have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply write those two words understanding and application these are the two things that make the word of god profit you understanding and application in all you're getting it says get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it wisdom tells you it is good to tithe understanding tells you how to tithe that you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe the bible says honor the lord not give to the lord when it comes to tithing your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding are we together now So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous i rather stay with i rather stay with a herbalist a herbalist is more friendly at least he's passionate about something than than a careless person who has no passion his ignorance will affect you don't forget people have atmospheres right the same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease 
what do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you what do you know what is your guarantee for a blessed life i think i'm fine you are joking you are really joking i went to school you are joking two times i'm very serious i mean jokes apart i'm really serious this night what do you know that will make you excel in ministry i'm a man of god they laid hands on me you are really joking what do you think will bring a crowd to your church i'm probing i'm showing you all the areas when i when it's like a call and response when i mention the area tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area and you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance we are just hoping we know can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years what if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow i come for koinonia god knows my heart is open what else see i'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge you see another mistake is many believers go for knowledge but our knowledge is not strategic is not applicable it's like a student who maybe got medicine and he can sit down and say i think i want to attend a, an architecture lecture and he goes there and then next tomorrow he's in theater art he's taking lectures but it's not strategic it's not constructive at the end he will never become a doctor so many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to you gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorance they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads Hallelujah. There is something Bishop Oyedeko knows that we do not know. There is something he has handled that is producing the results. Are we together? Oh, he's just lucky. He had an 18-hour vision. Wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing. That encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in health? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said, not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know 
that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation. There are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So, by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Oh, I shouldn't touch here. All right. Can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think he's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing and they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. 
Say, I am tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it, it doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada keys that open doors these are ancient keys brothers and sisters those see there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before the bible lists them in hebrews chapter 11 men who had these keys and did so many great things knowledge say it again i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing i'm tired of guessing we're guessing over our finances. We're guessing over ministry. We're guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody said there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from and you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. 
Please sit down, sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time, come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these keys not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. All right, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard, same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry? Is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you? They started it quietly, but now they are open about it. Everybody is telling you, you are really a nuisance to me. Pastors, who is seeking you? Who calls your phone and will not mind calling it hundred times? Because he knows that if you 
kick, his problem dies. Who is willing to pick your call? That even if you say, I don't have credit, say, no problem. Me, I have money. It's, it's, I need light. They sought for Jesus to a point that people tore zinc. They knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on. Who has been that desperate about your grace? Who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it? Light. Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and bail yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own, even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture and just say, this. I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life and I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have, it will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility, this man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking, I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if, you will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed, although you are in a place of tremendous change pride familiarity you do not discern you do not discern please listen to me the bible says you don't discern the lord's body and for that reason many are weak many are sick oh i've had koinonia message activating breakthrough destiny i've had it i was even there they used me as an example and you think that letter is with illumination and somebody somewhere in one one room made with mud will download it and say lord i have found it i found the key so destiny help us and be praying it and the holy ghost will say this is it a woman came from benway state i think i, I can't remember last year or so this woman came with her husband. They were pastors for many years. They had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman, I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message digested the message she said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times there are messages in my life i've listened to up to 1000 times one message god is my witness one message i'm a product of many anointings what are you a product of your world your rema your deception you keep moving around in confusion with no result Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God will do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit. Not good dressing. Not English. Not even Rema. It says, you, if you are not rising, your light has not come. It was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your
your name we will rise I don't know you reign on us it's in your name we will rise I don't know you reign on us in your name I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations. During my retreat for this year, I said any ministry I honor, we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this. No matter how you deceive me, I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we'll start. Because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man 
a man must appear for that door to open so my prayer is very strategic and intentional i don't pray stupid prayers i pray with intelligence lord where are the helpers i call them because i know if a helper does not appear that door will not open and here comes the helper because i know how to call them they never come on their own they are always called you have been waiting for them you will wait forever there is a mystery that calls helpers are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything. All the messages are there with the testimonies. Do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say, activate us. What is all this? What do you need to learn again? And you call your uncle. He says, I won't pick. And you are there helpless. And the angels are saying, what is uncle? We are here. What is uncle? Have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people. It's because we have not put balloon around the church. That's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance. And, and, and we have protocol and PA. No power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs. And you see people writing our ignorance. And they go back to go and practice it. And come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility. Never make a mistake to think it is guess. It can be reproduced anywhere. The same result. It was founded upon mysteries, not luck. Are we together? Yeah. Jesus went to the desert. The same crowds came. He went to the mountain. He went by the... The people, men and women, climbed the mountain, stayed there three days. He had to now say, let's feed them. Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me, I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next, when, 14. Next week, Friday. Next week, Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, 
I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, yeah, I can say it, oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by, it waved me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way to better days. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you, with that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, ba, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university. There are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange it for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father 
God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more I'm so aware of my ignorance so I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do Lord I need you more and more more and more more and more listen Listen, I want to challenge you, Koinonia. You have to be determined. Go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results. Humble yourself and pursue light. Are we together now? Are we together now? Forget about Valentine or whatever it is. Of course, celebrate it. God bless you. But I'm telling you this. If you want a happy day, February 14th, every day of your life, find out what has God said. Do I understand what is? Don't think what you think God said. You see that? You can assume it's like exams. Every student sits down, they say, start, and everybody's writing. And when you come out, the person will say, what was your answer? This person say, five. I say, my own was three. And two of them believe they are right. It's left for the lecturer. By the time you see zero, what does that mean? It means you were wrong. You say, ah, but the man didn't mark my script. Well, you still got zero. Everybody who scored five got it. For you did your calculation and arrived at three, meaning you failed. You didn't get it well. It's up to you to adjust and say, no, no, no. I think I missed something. Or be arrogant and say, it's a bad man waiting for another man. Many of us never will admit that we are ignorant. It doesn't cost me anything. You, you don't know how I, whenever God tells me, son, I think you need to know more. There is a dimension of me you do not know here. And you have to correct it. I jump at it. I almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um, um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change. When you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life, you see what is happening. You just sit down. You see, you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it. If I am not getting results in my life right now and Pastor Femi is getting results and I try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious, I'm only joking because the truth is you have problems and do you know members know where to get answers? Oh yes. They know where to get answers. I told you, was it last week or week before last, that if I am an unbeliever, when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I won't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I will wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I will bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church. Members will hold charm and come for service with it. The moment they are talking before altar call, somebody will stand up and say, Sir, this guy bought for you. This is the charm that brought it. And I can throw it if you can prove it otherwise. That's what happened between Moses and Pharaoh. He had to take the rod and Pharaoh said, Get out of this place. You grew up. You ate the food that this God, Ra, brought. Now you are coming to destroy it. And Moses said, I found someone higher. Nobody great, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Listen, Moses said, as at that time, I thought Ra was the highest of the gods. And so my allegiance, but I found, I found somebody in the wilderness. And he called himself, I am. 
and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues pharaoh had to give up pastors let's stop deceiving people we know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth we know where we have results and where we don't have results let's admit it and not explain creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god is waiting for the manifestation there are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I will wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go shake it take up a katana ba, ba, ba. and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation for instance hear me that no human being no man born of a woman can take your life not with enchantment i can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars maybe when i'm traveling now they now say die it's difficult to kill me i look just physical but they that are with me the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done the earlier you admit it the faster and the better for you oh there's one guy that said i should just hold on 
when a job when there's job interview he will give me that's too costly you are living your life at the mercy of somebody if he now doesn't work you will hate the person why don't you live forget about all these things and wait upon god are we together now oh a lecturer promised me that this time around i will get a in my project what if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense then you fail woe to him that puts his strength in a man oh god said i'm going to enter the house how do you think you are going to enter the house just because you think you are earning fifty thousand, can fifty thousand give you a house you to ask yourself look at see this is how foolish i'm sorry to say but this is how foolish some of our parents are they they, they whenever they are, they are looking at their salary oh fifty thousand so let's calculate it will never work that way the devil will use it to destroy you one sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us you've raised five hundred thousand one sickness will wipe it away but you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night and get up in the morning and say sorry i don't know who this person is but the lord has called me and said pastor alpha god has said i should change your story and you'll be sitting there dumbfounded and god will say you ask for it i said ask and you shall receive but the bible says that we not pray amiss mothers fathers everybody please hear me there is a way out of everything i believe there is a way out of everything sister that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation just one more thing i'll add to us and we'll pray one of the mysteries that i have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of christ i know there are many mysteries I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change. All men are not equal. Criticize me, but just listen. All men are not equal. If you take that mindset, this is not supposed to be a bad statement. Please don't misunderstand me. I wish it were a lie, but it's the truth. All men are not equal it was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth he said because you cannot discern the Lord's body the organogram of and the structure he said for this cause for not discerning I'm not talking of holy communion for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough he said some are weak how many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body it's like a table if you come to eat on the table is it not what you know that you will eat you see something looking yellow you are not sure and you leave it there and later you find out that that thing is good for your health that's how we are listen i'm talking about light and illumination the bible says let the word of christ dwell in us in all richness colossians 3 16. but you see one of the greatest blessings of god to the church outside the holy spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body please listen to me i've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open the moment you meet christ there are two ministries you must encounter the apostolic and the prophetic the bible says the church was built with a very definite system it says christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with god but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself. You hear me say this thing all the time. Yet no matter how arrogant you are, no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions. 
that it will take a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ serve God with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say I thought I, I need somebody with Rema tell me Greek and Hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like John like 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 a prophet even Jesus could not ignore the ministry of John and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle John said ah I've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John when it was time the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils separate me Paul and Barnabas he spoke to them there was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets but they never excelled in ministry look at that they died with their prophetic grace because although they were prophets they ignored the structure of the body listen there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again that's why some of us are where we are gods of ourselves with our own rema bragging all around there was a pastor friend I used to watch him um, the guy loves me so much he admires me but I think for a very long time I used to see him he just comes around, laughs around when they are prophesying or speaking he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand he just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving and I knew that this guy would never receive anything in his mind he thinks he will receive let me tell you something there are requirements from receiving from these gifts one of the requirements is honor honor, honor honor you must honor both the person and the office he says he please this is not human worship i don't want to i have no business i wish i were not the one preaching this i wish we were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true i have seen listen i have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families and i've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as i watched these families go down in penury because honor is the key that releases the anointing jesus entered certain cities and passed like this a woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him what have you ignored that has refused your door from opening please hear what I'm saying koinonia don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the Bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible right that he told him lift up a serpent is it not true look at how people were immune in the bible things were happening to others elijah there was famine he never was even concerned about the famine because he knew that nothing would happen to him there was famine in Samaria Elisha came he was not saying I am dying give me food he came and saw women eating their children and said what happened there was another mystery that gave him supply brothers and sisters there is a way out of every situation in your life you can come to a man of God to pray for you 
but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who will encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are there a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this I have watched with shock the way I have ministered to people and their lives have changed. A, a woman gave a testimony and this is true. This is, I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry. The woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message. And she said she always used to ignore it because, you know, she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that. You, you know what I'm saying? And one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then god was you know using my voice to just challenge her and say go and listen to that message and change your story she said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone listen there was someone that had owed her for a long time as soon as she transferred that text message just the text as in uh, you know how it, you transfer a message it just touched her phone that was how the person called her and said where are you come and meet me at the bank the woman said this is a lie what is going on here it will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says it's all well says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish she there is a way you can honor a man of God and put pressure on his office. Not anointing his office. It will force him to release something into your life. When I say honor, I don't mean money. A deep, a deep seated. There are a few men of God I've met in my life. And the way I honored them when they were speaking and blessing me, I knew it came from their spirit. I'll find somewhere to stop because I want us to pray. Brothers and sisters, results are possible in the spirit. It's not a matter of luck. It's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing. The mystery of the communion. Many of us take communion just as something they do in church. Get me wafers. Get me zobo. Okay, there's five alive. Bring it. And you're like, oh God, thank you. And you just threw it. You just took breakfast. Whereas it has delivered a lot of people. Tithing. You do it, but not with understanding. So the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody, you, just, you are just waiting. Those who are tight as you come and stand. And although you are supposed, you are doing something spiritual, it's not working. Because it's not done. The Bible says, honor the Lord. It didn't say bribe him. You squeeze your envelope, you just come and stand and say, oh yeah, God, take. No. When Abraham met Melchizedek, king of Salem, that ancient city, 
listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid I know I'm about to bless you, but my first instruction is fear not. You have done something that is about to bring prosperity. People will not understand the mystery. So be courageous to take the criticisms. Because I'm about to change your life. He said, I am your exceeding great reward. Abraham is so intelligent. The moment God said, I am your exceeding great reward. It, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a, a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him. You see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding understanding it was an impartation just one mystery i've shared with you do you know if you hold on to this mystery this law of honor this year alone you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime i promise you just this law just this law just this law something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach God with a stubborn heart. You approach God with a childlike heart. Please, please, Koinonia, hear me. I'm about to pray for you. For heaven's sake, believe the things you hear me say. I love you too much to mislead you. Gentiles, please give us Isaiah 60 again. Verse 3. This is the year that Gentiles should come to your light. This is the year it should happen. That you see somebody get up and come and meet you. I mean, Gentiles coming to your light. They come with their blessings. When Jesus was born, the wise men saw his star. They started looking for it with gold, frankincense. When they looked at Jesus, they looked at a baby, but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby. They started bowing down. They didn't wait until he became an adult. They didn't say, let's see, let's watch if he becomes a serious man. They knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days 
They could not find the donkey. And they say, you know what? Let's not waste our time. There is a man. There is a man. This man, there is a prophet. There is a man of God. And they said, ah, there's nothing to take to him. They were smart enough. And the moment they went to the gates, at the gates they saw him. And he looked at them. Do you know what he told them? He said, go and wait for me and I will tell you everything in your heart. Do you know what is a mountain to you? Is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you. What looks like a mountain? You are there complaining about house rent and God is saying, no, 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 no. Everybody is growing, but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see. Look at, at once they met Samuel. Samuel said, I will tell you every, he didn't say I will sit down for counseling. He said, just go up there, wait for me. I will tell you what is in your heart. And when he went there, their biggest problem became the smallest. He said, I know you came for restoration. Forget about that. That's not the issue. The donkey has been found. Is that a human being? You think that's a human being talking? No, that's a system. It's not a man. It's a system in a human body. The same thing with Melchizedek. You think Melchizedek was just a man? Just a man older than Abraham? How can a man bless a man and, and say possessor of heavens and earth? Can a man bless another man like that? A man that even Christ associated himself with. The Bible says his priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see all these strange men. Elijah, Noah. I've taught you. Do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums? Three stadiums. Story building. Three stadiums alone. In hundred years he built it. Is that a normal human being? Made of gopher wood. So you know why he cursed his son. I've told you, he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness. There was something the son saw. It's a mystery. Are we together now? When Jezebel was rising to judge people, Elijah shows up. The Tishbite, the Bible calls him. You think that's a normal human being? He appears again and he appears again in Revelation. What of Enoch, the seventh man from creation? He used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him. Just imagine one day we don't find Aaron. No grave, no nothing. It's after he leaves we may say, ah, so this guy we have been calling Aaron. That's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected. People looked at him and said, my goodness, so it is true. See, when we get to heaven, one of the shock for people is when God shows the, the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth. Some of us will put our hands on our head. And say, I lived with this guy forever. I, he was my roommate. Yet I didn't have the eyes to see. I was in his church. I was even an usher. There was capacity like this to help me. Look at Gehazi. Foolish man. If he wanted money. If, if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money. Is it not to kneel down and beg? Rather than going to lie. You see why he's foolish. Very stupid man. That's why he didn't receive any mantle. A man who can wipe a rich man's story. Wouldn't you just kneel down and say, my father, change my story. And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a bear, a sheep bear. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. What kind? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Oh no. Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away. It can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it. I have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. 
what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart lift up your hands and thank the lord for this word tonight illumination the grace that comes hear me when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor thank you lord for this word I like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can live i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job Lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight, I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God. Show me what I need to do. Those outside, make sure you are praying. Jesus brought you here to change your life forever. Light, 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 light. Sika barato soto predege de bele de bos. Saka prata se tele pratika te koshoto prada na bala na bala na bala. Alleluia. Hallelujah. I want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results. Be very sincere with God and say, Lord, there has to be a way out of this. Lift your voice and pray. Please take it serious, Koinonia. Lord, I've not seen the anointing in my life. Pray. Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I prayed and fasted, nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me everybody runs away from me even those who want to help me change their minds something must be wrong somewhere i admit tonight that i need help lord i pray for my academic it's been from one tragedy to another there, there's got to be a way out Man proto soto predege de bele de bosh. E kabarada balada basata da barakata shada balada bosh. Em pros kele pras kabaria takaroto sudo balada ba. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Listen, we are still praying. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you. I'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances 
and resolve it once and for all I will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Aparato soto prende que de balada bosh Rakata parada bosh Come on be angry with the challenges in your life and pray 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 I was studying I wanted to find out the secret of church growth I've heard people say it I've listened to them I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. Come live in me, oh my Lord. Take over Come live in me And I will rise Hallelujah You are a parent here yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion the moment they can think and they can understand lead them to jesus consciously it is very responsible lead them to jesus if you have not done so as you go back home don't just say my children are smart call them preach the gospel to them the moment they, are, they can think they should be born again please be take let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell i rejected him i had a choice but i rejected him jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here i truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth i want to lead you in an honest prayer i know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen i'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul i'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here I'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and I want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately 
Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I make up my mind and I make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that my sins are forgiven. I declare that the life of God, eternal life, is mine today. Holy Spirit, I receive you as the life of God in my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God forever. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have unashamedly come. The Bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father, Jesus speaking. Lord, these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace. I ask you, oh God, you who is the helper of us all, help them. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the righteousness of God is at work in you. The grace to live a victorious Christian life. The grace for passion and intimacy with God is released upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate every one of you. Now, listen, I know that some of you are rededicating your life to Christ. There are a number of you, those in here, I just want you to walk out this way. And then the various overflows, I know that there are people attending to them. They will have your details. I praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service. I salute you. Thank you so much for your courage. Your life will never be the same. God bless you. Please direct them. Make sure someone is directing them. Make sure someone is directing them. Hallelujah. Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart. And, and it's been confirmed from different people, seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth. Number one is the healing ministry. I believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry. It's true. Even some of us that supposedly walk in it, the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry. The healing ministry. I'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray, we'll get to the business of the night. The healing ministry is very important. It played a major role. The challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance is true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money 
is just some kind of um, it's just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that I am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so God must first walk upon our hearts is the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in Zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one I remember one night the Lord told me said I'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and God said no if I don't take it away one demon will give it an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so God withdrew that experience God only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have. And I like, to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19. This is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him. There was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God. So they came to hear and to be healed. The second category of people we see, they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Unclean spirits. The source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits. And the Bible says, and the whole multitude, listen, sought to touch him. Why? For there went power out of him to heal them. I love the ministry of Jesus. So the Bible tells us why the people got healed. That there was power. Other versions say virtue. There was something that Jesus had that would lead him into the people. And the moment it entered them, they would discover that their sicknesses were gone. Are we together? Hmm. Acts chapter 10, when you read verse 38, Peter was teaching. That was the salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. 
The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen, it says who went about doing good. Went about doing good. Went about doing good. So we see other things that Jesus did that were not captured. He didn't just heal the sick alone. He didn't just deliver the oppressed alone. He went about doing good. Breakthrough is a good thing. Restoration is a good thing. He went about doing good. And then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and there, wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue. To see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this. Just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time. And we are wasting the time of God's precious people. That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, 
he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how jesus held his crusade he would take out time not just to preach but to teach jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is. You share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell. So well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, 
Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move abba is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means... The discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set like koinonia now they brought unto him that means there was an information that had reached town that when we bring certain people to this man there was something about him that was able to heal them. They brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? 
one question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray are you truly tired of the situation you see there's something I think I was sharing with I can't remember who I was sharing this with I was saying pain it was you Jimmy pain is very important sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain don't stop it because there are people if you have not been pushed to the wall you will not see the need for God for as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you you will not see the need to be serious so sometimes God deliberately allows it and that pain the day five of your children said daddy is this how we'll continue you just get up and say I'm coming for koinonia today I'm, I'm tired of this that pain was an indication that something is wrong and that it needs remedy fast pain there are people who never run and come to God but you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told the doctor just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay there are some of us you are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years whoever told you it cannot you heard the lady that said they stole her phone they came with machete and stole her phone I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a machete foolish thieves they don't know that a body without a spirit is dead The same way you have been carrying a certificate that's the body where is the spirit component that's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin but when the spirit component comes let me tell you this god never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted a spirit entity must assist you even you if you meet a herbalist that herbalist is not alone there is a spirit assisting him you see that yes don't walk through life by your strength and power please help them life will be too hard for you this is the mystery of hardship rejecting the assistance of the spirit i would dare not do ministry without the spirit what else will i be doing but with god with god all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone Jesus said, I'm not alone. All these miracles you see, I'm being assisted. Brothers and sisters, the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance. The realm of the spirit is in partnership. You can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside, shouting at overflow. No, no. Habba. Words are not hammer. But when the spirit is upon them, that word will enter you like a drug. And all of a sudden, you will find out that certain things will go. <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive.
the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um okay god i know you will bless me in the name of jesus may god lift you amen I just, well it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah i believe the lord i came here full of the holy ghost and i came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life i want you to be tired and say god will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire lord will you leave me will i leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor i believe him i believe that he's a mighty man i believe he's awesome i have seen his hand i have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace, I'm about to pray, for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation 
for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of god can solve i stand before the god who has helped me and has helped this ministry i release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of jesus christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that the man that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor I prophesy them upon you now I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you hallelujah hallelujah there is the grace for favor those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while i traveled to lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going listen carefully something is happening here a young man just walked to me and held me and i looked at him and he said sir remember me i said well i don't remember you what's the story he came here koinonia with a property his property and carried it and gave me as a seed i said what for i mean you're a young man what will you go and tell your wife brothers and sisters from november till now nine properties and one estate came to him a young guy Abba. is it charm what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent i can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no i can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that god has brought by
by his grace happen in this Zaria, not London. Zaria, here. Many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you. Nobody thinks about you. God does not talk to anybody about you. A gentleman, I think one of these, uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays, and he stood to see me after the service, and he said, man of God, my life is hard. Can you help me with some money? And I looked at him, I said, you are not a wise gentleman. I know you need money now, but you should ask yourself, the person giving you the money, where did it come from? The wiser prayer is for favor. I said, let's do an experiment. I told him, I said, I will pray for you for favor. Return next Friday and tell me what happened. If nothing happens, I will give you money. Agreed? He said, yes. And I prayed for him and he went. Brothers and sisters, on Monday, Monday, that's the Monday after, that gentleman sent me a text. And he said, his uncle, that he's even fighting with their father, that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school? And he said, nobody. He said, so why have you not been reaching me? All of you, these proud children and so on and so forth, that he was going to start sending him money. I said, you, you believe that that uncle just did it by his will. Listen, this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you. That's flattery. This wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can i pray that prayer for you again in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor hallelujah it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not think mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of mordecai bow the knee mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think i pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor i command it to be open now i command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys 
it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make boasts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor in my academics pray favor over my job lord favor 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 hallelujah Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey Jimmy I want to give you water what that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because the lord wants to bless the works of our hands listen whether you are on a job or whatever it is you see these hands you see they are it's a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray I'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ
go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does God do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away your prayer life becomes worship not just hours of petition in the flesh hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done overflow to the overflow by the road please quickly we have to hurry up thy kingdom come thy will be done talk to you madam this woman please tap her for me come Hello, him, there is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise Hello, him, The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. I command in the name of Jesus, remove that evil you have put now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm about to pray. And I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen. There will be such a massive, massive, massive deliverance. Now, let it not surprise you. I've explained to you what this thing is. It's a separation. You should rejoice when it happens. Because it means that you are entering a new season. 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 Le 
You ran. 
your hands. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to all your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you, you, they, you, you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three, just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three, I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing. And the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray for the sick shortly hold on guys hold on hold on hold on please i want to pray the lord is showing me something that is very interesting the lord wants to break cycles there are people every season certain things happen every september somebody must die every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, the power that activates cycles, demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do. One, two, get ready. Three. The chain of circles. Be broken. Cycles. Cycles of failure. Cycles of miscarriages. Cycles of unfruitfulness. By the sound of the spirit. Be broken now.
hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um, please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir I want to pray for you I don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but I was tra I traveled before that so I have not been coming I want to pray for you yes, sir. if I don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you you love Jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? yes, uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes, sir. that thing is a charm yes, it's sir. not a yes. charm yes. native yes. doctor yes, sir. Huh? Yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well meaning yes, sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can I pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction if Satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of jesus christ i pray for you sir the lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please your name is Agnes. Where are you from? I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai, there is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a herbalist and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written, by any demonic friend or whatever herbalist in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead, dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah. 
there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious father let this lady be free right now in the name of jesus christ come you this lady come you love jesus huh yes sir come you I, i'm not condemning you eh look at me you have to be very serious with god one two friends look at me god has delivered you many times you would have destroyed yourself huh you're a small girl you need to love god with all your heart please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 i'm standing and i'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the lord is saying uproot it i uproot this thing now in the name of jesus christ i uproot it now the spirit of the lord is taking me to benway state i've never been there physically but i'm seeing benway benway and i'm looking and i'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down it's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees in the name of jesus christ if there is any family involved in this sheketos kotopa karyakata I command and uproot him every tree that has not been planted help them by my father every tree I see Benway state in the mighty name of Jesus let there be an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting in the name of Jesus Let me pray for you my dear you are a nice lady but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the lord wants to help you father help your daughter in the name of jesus christ bad luck be gone now and forever in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ may the lord help you come my dear let me pray for you i'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of Jesus Christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to I want us to pray for the sick so that I can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but I'm telling you God wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear I want to pray for you in Jesus name the Lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of jesus i pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves jesus yes sir in the name of jesus christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of jesus christ may god help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him 
Mama, please stand up. I will pray for you. Look at me, ma. Please don't be embarrassed. But the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life. This thing they call in house a wahala. God wants to take it from your life. You are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord, but this, this cause of hardship. Um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Reba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you this. The month of April is your month of strange breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. The month of April is your month of breakthrough. Azuka, come. Lift the camera first. Let me pray for you and then you keep the camera. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you. And this project is going to lift you. This is something that has to do with your snapshot. But God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Open doors for you. Open doors for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. This lady. Um, Sarah. Come. There is witchcraft in your family. I have to pray for you. This thing is affecting everybody in the family. Everybody. Everybody. Not There's no exception. Everybody. Lord, take away this plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful people, beautiful ladies, but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell. Jeketos kata pakaria kato zibranda kata. Jebros katus kete katambria kata. In the name of Jesus Christ, I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. I silence the voice of the accuser. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to pray for the sick now. Listen, I know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping. Let your heart be open. Are we together? Number two, accept whoever is praying for you. Ask you what is wrong. You don't have to say, okay, it is my ears. or my... Don't worry. Don't worry. The people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch you. It doesn't matter what auditorium. It's a corporate grace that is working here. Hallelujah. And for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening, make sure you are praying. Because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road... Their requests are collected. Please, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. By the ministry of the Spirit. Several people serving as contact points. But we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick. Lord, your people have come. Some of them with incurable diseases. Some of them with all kinds of devils. I decree and declare 
that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame Taking away the pain, you make me just like you, my beautiful. My beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain, taking away the pain. Make my life so make beautiful, my, life so beautiful. my beautiful. My beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain. Make me just like you. Make me just like oh, you. my beautiful, my beautiful. You are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain, taking away the pain. Make me just like you. Make me just so beautiful. My beautiful, my beautiful. You are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain, taking away the pain. Make me just like you.
please make sure make sure everyone's request is here in the name of Jesus of your life, your power, your might, your faithfulness. Lord, in this month of February, we look to you again to surprise us. Lord, represented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. So Lord, I transfer the trust of your people to you. The one who is able to meet every need. And on the strength of the grace that only comes from you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The resurrected lamb. The one who is most victorious. I prophesy and I turn every request here. To become a testimony in the name of Jesus. As I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered. May they be promoted. There are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered. May they be laid to rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. If they are still praying for you in any of the overflows, don't worry. You can just connect with them while I pray for you. By the grace of God, you will not write your request twice. I thought I was done, but I just felt drawn again to it. Whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle, that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere. May the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now Wherever you are, you can receive. You've heard the testimonies. You've seen the things that happen. The Bible says, everyone who speaks, let him speak according to the measure of grace. 
there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay I command speed to your life I speak speed to your life I prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life 
and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up. Whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you, I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life 
whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight i stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of jesus christ give jesus a clap in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to